Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to start using SketchUp Make, and this should be already installed on your computer. If you're using a Mac, this tutorial will be especially helpful because there are a few different commands on a Mac than there are on a PC. So to start the process of creating this house that you're asked to create in this lesson, obviously you're going to click Start Using SketchUp, and this screen will appear with this ordinary dude just standing there. You're going to ignore any extensions at this point. And one really important thing is that you want to make sure that you have the toolbars set up appropriately. The toolbars that we're looking for you to have set up today are going to be this large toolbar, these two smaller ones up here at the top, and additionally just this color wheel here. There are a lot of other tools that you'll be asked to use but the primary ones are going to appear there. In order to set those up, you should go to View, Tool Palettes, and ensure that Large Tool Set is selected here. If it's not, just make sure that it is checked. You're going to then scroll down to Customize Toolbar. This looks like a pretty busy looking box here, but the only things that you're really going to need is to click and drag this to here, click and drag Styles to here, and make sure that Colors is also available. So you'd click and drag colors. All of these things had already been previously done in my program and so if you're not the first class to be using this on these computers it's very possible that somebody had set this up for you appropriately. You would press done to close out of that and now we're kind of ready to go. One important thing just to get you started that will help you uh, is to learn how to kind of rotate and pan and also to zoom in and out. On a Mac zooming in and out is as easy as scrolling. So you take two fingers, put it on the trackpad, down for out and up for in. If you wanted to orbit or rotate, you would just click at the O button and that would, this would appear here so you can kind of orbit around here. And if at the same time you wanted to pan, a little hand would appear, you'd just click shift, a hand would appear and you can go back and forth and you can go back to rotating then by releasing the shift key. So that's going to be really helpful. So let me center this guy again. So the first thing we're going to do in making our house is to create a base for it. So let me zoom out a little bit for us. To start, we want to create a rectangle. So we'll select R. We'll go directly to the origin and we'll click and drag. Now you might be like, okay, Maggie, you told us we wanted to create a 20 by 30 foot footprint. Um, and it's not that. And so the good thing about SketchUp is that you can just put the fields in the bottom right hand corner here. You don't actually have to even click in it. You just write 30 feet, comma, 20 feet, and press enter. And then this is going to be what appears in the correct dimensions. You're then going to use what's called the offset tool, and that is just the F button, to offset that footprint inward by six inches. So once the tool's selected, you're going to click inside the rectangle one time. Boom. Don't drag. Okay, that's a common mistake. Uh, and then you're going to manually type in six inches, and that's the that's not feet, right? And so you have to do shift and then that same key so that it turns into inches, and you're going to then press enter. And if we rotate a little bit, what we'll see is that we've got this nice little outline on our original rectangle. Now we're going to do uh, use another tool called the line tool, and we're going to add a four and a half inch interior wall. So I'll go line. The cursor is going to snap to the endpoints and midpoints. And so what I'm going to try to do here is, yep, there's the midpoint. I'm going to go across to the other midpoint and stop. To make sure that this is a four and a half inch interior wall, I'm just going to go right where this started. I'm going to go over this way. And it's not four and a half inches, so I'll just type in 4.5 inches like that. And then I will go all the way to the other side. And the good thing about this program is that it allow, it just sort of snaps exactly, so it keeps these two lines parallel. Now if you zoom in a little bit, what you'll notice is that I didn't go past, right? If you went past here to the very end, um, just make sure you go back and delete. Uh, but So one thing that's helpful is if you want to select any part of a line segment, just click the space bar and it'll go back to the Select tool. So if I zoom in on this a little bit, and let me rotate it around for you so it's easier for you to see. What I'm going to do is just select this portion, and I'm going to click the Delete button, and that'll get rid of it. 
Now I'm going to go to the bottom here. I'll zoom out a little bit as well. And I'm just going to do the same thing on the bottom here. All right, so now we have this footprint. It's looking good. We have the interior and exterior walls. And now the fun begins. We're going to get to use that push tool and we're going to get to extrude this up. So um, once again, I'm just going to orbit out. This is just a tool you're going to use a lot. So you'll just be toggling a lot between the O, the line tool, the rectangle tool, and, um, and the space bar a lot. So in order to uh, use the push pull tool, we're going to select P and we'll drag the wall. And remember, don't select the interior, the exterior, here the wall. And we're going to go up and we're going to tell it on the bottom here. Again, you don't have to click, you just have to type 10 feet. Enter. Nice. So now we have this thing, our, our little man is hidden. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the full thing. And now we have this base of a house right here. Now it's not very exciting yet, so let's add some detail to it. What we're now going to do is use the rectangle and the push-pull tools to add a 3 by 7 exterior doorway. So let's do that. So I'll click R. It doesn't tell us exactly where to start, so we're just going to start on the edge. Again, I don't have to be that careful. I just draw a rectangle and then I do three feet, comma, seven feet. And it turns into that. And I'm gonna now rotate around, go in the inside, rectangle. I'm now gonna do an interior doorway. And that interior is supposed to be 32 inches by seven feet. And so let me type 32 inches, comma, seven feet, enter. And um, one important feature is that you are going to have to push, using the push-pull tool, these open. All right. This can be a little challenging sometimes, but yep, you just want to make sure it goes right through. And we're going to just rotate around to make sure that it does. Yep, that one looks good. You don't want to go too far or not far enough. You're again going to do the use the push-pull tool on this one. And go straight in like that. And you can tell that we've done it because you can see the guy in the middle. And then in each of the exterior walls, we're going to add at least one 24-inch by 36-inch window. Um, they are specifying now that the window should be at a height of 7 feet. And so what we're going to do is use something called guidelines. and. Um, let me just show you how that works. Basically, if we use the line tool, I can go up a height of seven feet. Once again, I can just type that in here. And then what I'm gonna do is go from here, the end point. And let me say, I wanna start my window about three feet across. I'm just making up that value. Um, if I then go to the rectangle tool and start my window here, and I want to do a 36 inch by 24. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. There's some dog on my neighbors that's like going kind of crazy right now. So I hope that that's not too distracting at this point. So anyway, um, I've created that window. That looks good. Sorry about that. I think I got a little bit distracted. All right, and that should do it. Actually, I think that we wanted it to be 24 by 36. Yep, all right. And so then if you wanted to make a window that's equally spaced apart, you would just do the same thing. It actually um, automatically did it for me, but you want a three feet there. You then use the rectangle tool. You would create the same thing. So 24 by 36. All right, so 24 and 36, great. Oh, did I go back and do the wrong thing again? I did. All right, there we go. All right, and um, I'm gonna sort of stop there and I'm gonna get rid of these guidelines actually. And so I'll hit the select tool get rid of these guidelines and I'm going to use the push pull tool to push the window in here just enough all 
right? So it goes in. Good. All right. And again, we'll rotate around just to make sure we can see. Um, but anyway, now I'm going to show you how to make sure that you have put glass in the correct way. So here are two ways to do this. I'll show you both. The first is to simply, uh, if you just want to add some glass to the outside, you're just going to use the rectangle tool, click and drag like that. And now you've got a pane of glass. It's just not colored. Um, you're going to click the color tool, you're going to go to materials here, go to glass and mirrors, and um, let's select this one and just fill that in. And I think actually now I'm just going to have to go back because uh, it doesn't look like I actually filled this in properly. All right. All right, now we filled it in. That took a couple takes, but now we're good. So um, the next thing that I'm gonna show you is uh, how to actually just insert the pane of glass in a more realistic way, which is to come halfway through the window. And in order to do that, we're gonna need to zoom in a little bit more. So let's do that. So I'm zooming in. I'm now gonna orbit around until I can very clearly see just the interior of one of these parts of the window. I'll click the line tool, I'll go to the midpoint, I'll come down, and basically what I'm gonna do is just kind of like manually create this rectangle. I'm gonna rotate it around again, again, clicking the orbit tool. Now I'm gonna look at this face of it. Go L for line, come across to the midpoint, orbit around again. You can see that this process is a bit more tedious, but of course it does end up looking a bit more realistic in the end, and you'll see what I mean when we compare the two. I'll orbit around one more time, just so we can see the bottom there. Select this line tool again, and come all the way here. And so what you can see is now we have this pane of glass, but it's installed in a way that's a little bit more realistic, and I'll add now the glass here and to see our finished product and how they, the two windows compare, you can see like this. And um, it becomes a little bit more apparent when you rotate around, so let me orbit for you. Right? You can see that one is just like glass on the outside and one is installed in a manner that looks similar to the way that one would actually install a window. So you can take this as more of a challenge and if you want to make something look more realistic, this is one way you can go about it. All right, so um, now we're gonna make the house into a group and we're gonna highlight it entirely. So let's zoom out a little bit and let's get rid of all of this, these materials here. The way to do that is obviously click the space bar to get the select tool. You're gonna actually click and drag. You can tell that like when you do that from right to left, you get this um, dashed line box and that actually is gonna select anything it touches. If you go the other way, you run the risk of just selecting a certain number of the features and not all of them. So uh, then you're gonna right click go down to make group, and now this whole thing is a, is a group. 